1949, the quiet neighborhoods of Cottage City, Maryland, and later St. Louis, Missouri, were shaken to their core by an event so terrifying it would inspire one of the most iconic horror films of all time. This is the true story of Ronald Doe, a 14-year-old boy who became the center of a battle between good and evil, a battle that would haunt everyone involved for the rest of their lives. Ronald was an ordinary boy, but that changed after the sudden death of his beloved Aunt Harriet. Devastated by her loss, Ronald attempted to reach her beyond the grave using a Ouija board she had gifted him. What he unleashed was far more than he could have ever imagined. It started small, scratching noises behind the walls, objects moving on their own. But soon, these occurrences escalated. The family, desperate and terrified, sought help from doctors and psychiatrists, but none could explain the increasingly violent phenomena that plagued Ronald. With nowhere else to turn, the family reached out to the church. Father Albert Hughes, a local Catholic priest, was the first to meet Ronald. But even he, a man of deep faith, was unprepared for the horrors that awaited him. During an attempted exorcism, Father Hughes was attacked by the boy, who spoke in a guttural, otherworldly voice, hurling blasphemies and thrashing with inhuman strength. The session ended abruptly when the boy broke free of his restraints, slashing the priest with a bedspring that had inexplicably torn loose. The church, now fully aware that this was no ordinary case, called upon Father William Bowdern, an experienced exorcist, along with several other priests. They moved Ronald to the Alexian Brothers Hospital in St. Louis, where the final and most grueling exorcism would take place. Over the course of weeks, Ronald endured relentless rituals. He spoke in Latin, a language he had never learned, and revealed secrets about the priests that he could not have possibly known. His body convulsed violently, and at times an unearthly stench filled the room, as if the very air had been poisoned. The priests were pushed to their limits, their faith tested by the demonic forces that had taken hold of the boy. But they refused to give up. With each exorcism, the battle between the priests and the entity possessing Ronald grew more intense. It wasn't until the final session, after hours of desperate prayer, that something changed. Ronald let out a blood-curdling scream as the demon finally revealed its name. I am Legion. The priests commanded it to leave in the name of God. And in that moment, Ronald's body went rigid, his back arched impossibly high before he collapsed back onto the bed, completely still. When Ronald awoke, he had no memory of the events. The torment had ended, but those who witnessed the exorcism would never forget the horror they had faced. The church sealed the records, but the story spread, whispered in hushed tones, inspiring the novel and the film. The Exorcist What happened to Ronald Doe remains one of the most chilling exorcism cases in history. Was it truly a demonic possession, or was there something even more sinister at play? That, dear viewers is for you to decide.